Hello, my name is Marty and this is Sewing Nerd Confessions. This is part six of a series that I did called Creative Upcycling. And what I did was I took a couple pairs of jeans and some extra fabric and I created a beautiful denim upcycled jacket. Um, this series is kind of in depth as far as the creative thinking that goes behind doing an upcycled project. Uh, it's not a fast project, but it's very fulfilling. And I think it's kind of fun to watch, getting inside my brain <laughs> and seeing how do you make those creative decisions. So I kind of talk about the balance of texture and color. Uh, and so I go through how I thought about it and I explain what I'm doing and I even changed my mind a few times, which happens and that's okay. So um, one of the first things that I talked about before I did this jacket was, if you're gonna do an upcycle jacket like this, don't be in a hurry. You know, that's fine. Have your other fast tried and true sewing patterns and, and you know, if you need a little quick make, but for something like this jacket that I have finished, you want to be able to take your time because it takes time and sometimes you have to sit back and you have to think about it. And so uh, today is, like I said, part six. So what I'm going to do is I am going to show you a video of me putting the rest of the jacket together. When we last talked, I had the jacket assembled at the sleeves or at the shoulders and I had the sleeves on, but I did not have that seam sewn up here. I didn't have the lining in. I was still decorating it and putting on all of the fun little extra things. So I am gonna meet you on the other side. Okay, so I'm just pulling out my scraps because I want to make a flap for the top of the pocket that I made out of the patch with her name on it. And so I'm thinking that maybe that khaki color would look really nice. So I'm just gonna cut a piece that's approximately the same size and see what that looks like. Now I'm taking the red jean and maybe I could make a flap out of that color. So I've got a couple choices now, um, but I'm still not 100% sure on what to do. So I just keep exploring and I'm looking for that little zipper part that had that tech button on it. And I'm thinking maybe I could use that. So maybe I could utilize the little buttonhole that's already there, use that as a flap, and then maybe put that tech button down. So at this point, I always try to kind of play around until something rings true. And, you know, once I find something I like, I go with it. So I really kind of like that inside out jean look that I did on that pocket. So I'm going to play around with that idea. See if maybe, you know, maybe I should trim that out, that little tech button piece. So I just keep exploring all the different options, holding it up there, seeing if uh, anything kind of hits home, I guess. That doesn't look too bad. But then I was trying to figure out like, how am I gonna attach that to where it makes sense? And so this is what I ended up doing. All right, so a little bit out of order, but I'm gonna go back and show you how I did the um, front facing. So I ended up using the belt from the khaki jeans and you'll see a little printing on there it says Gloria Vanderbilt and I need to make it a little longer than the belt so I ended up taking the belt all apart because I didn't want to utilize it the way it was I want to have a little bit less showing on the front than I do on the on the inside and so 
I went ahead and ironed that flat, well, somewhat flat. <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfectly flat because that ridge is probably always going to be there. And so, like I said before, this does not have a facing on the jacket. And so this is just something that I'm adding to it myself. And so I just want a little bit of that to show on the front side, but most of it is gonna be on the inside. Okay, so here is what I put on the inside of the jacket as a back facing. And I put a little label, it's kind of cheeky. This is the back. It's obvious what's the back, so it's kind of funny that I put that in there. But I went ahead and used the little dress barn labels that came out of the kind of reddish colored jeans. And I, I added a little bias tape that I made out of that silk charmeuse lining. And uh, I went ahead and cut out the lining because I had to know if I even had any extra little scraps to do this with. Okay, so now we're gonna have some fun with some of my tack button collection. And uh, I just like to lay everything out if I don't know for sure which one I'm gonna use. And I already have some tack buttons on there that are kind of a brassy color, but I'm just gonna ignore that for now. That's my choices. So I have kind of a really soft, kind of a silver platinum, it's kind of almost a nickel, but it's it's more silver in, in person. And then it's got this little pink jewel in the middle of it. So I thought that could be kind of fun. Another one that I really, really liked is this soft gold. Uh, it looks really good with the brass that's already there, but it's a little more modern. So um, in my mind at this point in time, those are my two favorites. But I like to keep an open mind, so I went ahead and kind of tested out all the other little ones. This one is kind of more of an antique silver, where it has kind of that black and silver tone. And then I have a couple that are kind of brass, <laughs> making sure that it fits in the in the hole that I that I did the buttonhole. <laughs> you always want to do that. Okay, that's the one. I don't know if you can see it real well, but that had a little pink in there. And so those are the ones that I ended up going with. I am pressing that with my little wood clapper. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> um, and I'm doing it on the wrong or the top side because it does leave little indents. But I actually, you know, if you have a little indent in your clapper, you can steam it with your iron and steaming wood will pull that dent out. I went ahead and put a little tack button on the top of the little pocket and I reinforced the back of it since it was just the corduroy. So the corduroy is pretty sturdy but it's, it's definitely a little drapier than the rest. And I made a second little tack button so that she can tighten the sleeves if she wants to when she's wearing it you know, because there is no cuff on the end of these sleeves. Kind of hop to the inside pocket and I've put together a couple pieces, smaller pieces, kind of scraps, <laughs> I guess. But one of them had a pocket still on it. So I added that together and I am gonna make an inside pocket, like a breast pocket 
for her to be able to put her cell phone in in that so it's kind of safe and secure and away from somebody being able to pull it out of her pocket so um, I am cutting some of the lining for that because I want it to be nice on the inside and so I just kind of cut a piece that's the same size and uh, it's gonna turn out really nice it'll be nice and soft so I just want to make it you know large enough for a cell phone I don't want it any bigger than that so I figured she could actually use the already you know made pocket or she could use the pocket that I'm gonna create so I went ahead and did it like right sides together and now I'm just trimming it I'm gonna pull it in pull it right side out just steam that up real nice pretty simple I'm just I'm just winging it <laughs> I really don't know what I'm doing on this one but I figure that if I just make something that I can attach directly onto the jacket after I put the lining in so it was a little tricky um, the machine didn't really want to go over the top part of that like already pocket in there so I'm gonna add some sides to it because uh, I know that when I attach it to the jacket the jacket has some really thick places already and if I add this that's really really thick and the jacket that's already really thick I might not make it so I thought I better add those little flaps on the on the sides and that's what I could attach the pocket to the jacket with when I go to sew it on the machine okay well I hope you really enjoyed all of that little extra stuff some of the things that I didn't show was putting the lining in sewing the seam up because that's fairly basic um, but I did want to show you all those little extra things so now I'm gonna show you the whole jacket it's so pretty it is just so so beautiful I just I love it and one of the things that I love about doing upcycle projects is that every single one is absolutely unique and it's um you know it's very special so here's the inside of the jacket with that beautiful silk charmeuse lining oh I've got this together let me let me take this apart so you can see it look at that Ooh. here is what that inside pocket looks like all finished it's a little rough but that's okay it's an upcycle jacket it doesn't need to look pristine and couture um, but this pocket is wonderful it is lined with the silk and she can use this part of the pocket or she can use the pocket on the pocket so there's two pockets so she can use whatever one she wants this one is a little more secure it's a little deeper a little wider and she's going to use it for her cell phone which i think is brilliant so it's like just a breast pocket now when i sewed that on i had already done the lining i'd already done all of the top stitching on the front of the jacket and all the patches but i wanted to wait to put that on because I wanted to see where it needed to go. I wanted to take my time doing it. And I know that you can do like a welt pocket on the inside um, and that's definitely an option. I did not want to do that because I knew she was going to put her heavy cell phone in there. So I didn't want to make the pocket out of a heavier material than the silk charmous lining and then have it pull on that. So this is what I did. I went ahead and made it out of a dur the durable denim, and then I actually stitched it all the way around to secure it after the lining was put in, okay? I stitched it through the front, but you can't really tell. So here's my top stitching in that lighter color. So when I stitched it, I stitched it like right here, over here, over here, and then I came down here and went across and over, and you, you really can't see it. 
And so I think it worked out really good. I used a little bit darker thread. So um, that's what also helped because my top stitching is a little bit lighter thread and this is a little bit darker. So your eye just kind of ignores it, which is great. <laughs> okay, mm. the tack buttons. I ended up using those kind of silver nickel platinum color and they have the little tiny pink gemstones in the middle. I just thought they were really cute, a little bit modern. So I ended up putting quite a few on the front. I ended up putting six on the front, which I know is a little extra, probably one extra than normal. And then of course there's also tack buttons on the sleeve. We talked about that last time. So those match. This tech button and this part, if you recall, was already a part of the denim shorts and I just utilize that. So it's uh, it's okay. You can put a couple different metals together. No biggie. All right. I did end up attaching this. Okay. So you'll see You'll see that I opened up the side seam and I attached it in the side seam and then I re-sewed that side seam. That was before I put the lining in. So after I put the sleeves together and when I put the lining in, I didn't do it like a burrito method or anything. I just attached it at the top part of the jacket. I hand stitched the lining to the jacket. And so before I hand stitched the lining to the jacket, I actually hand stitched the jacket hem up and then I just hand stitched that. You can't really see the stitches. And I don't know, hand stitching is really relaxing to me. I really enjoy it. So that's why it's like, okay, if I have an excuse to hand stitch, I do. And then on the hem, I also hand stitched that. And I also hand stitched the hem of the jacket to the jacket before I hand stitched that lining down. So if I needed to, I could just unpick that hand stitching and get to the inside of the jacket if I had to do that. But I always save that to last so I don't have to do it. <laughs> All right, and then you might have seen on the back of the jacket, I actually added another little tiny patch, a little crown. I just put it on corduroy and then I hand, and then I machine stitched it before the lining was in. And then that will fray a little bit and that'll look cute. So I think the back of it looks really good. All right, we see that and then so last time I was debating on whether or not I was gonna do that little flap on the top. And I know you've already seen me uh, sew that. And so here it is with the button hole opened up and the little tech button, which is cute. I really liked the way that that looked visually. It really stood out. And you know, when you think about this project, it's two different jeans and purple corduroy, right? You would think that that's crazy, like in all these things on there, but the contrast of those colors was very minimal. They were all kind of medium shading. And so it didn't have like a lot of pizzazz from a distance. And I really liked the way that this looked with the inside out red denim on here and on here. And so I went ahead because I didn't like the look of the stitching on the top of that red denim here. I went ahead and just added that right on top of the stitching just to give it a little bit of contrast on that front of the jacket. I have contrast a little bit on the sleeves and then I have a little bit of contrast on the back, especially with this new patch. Oh, it's so cute. I'm gonna have to make me one of these for sure. Okay, and so, like I said before, when I made my daughters, um, this fits the customer perfectly. She's a lot shorter than me, so 
Her arms are a lot shorter, so it's just perfect for her. And then this will button up if she wants to. And then the back is really cute with those patches. And I really like the um, tan denim on the back of the yoke, which is kind of fun, but the front has mostly purple, which is what I wanted. I wanted that purple to really stand out. So there it is. All right. I want to thank you guys for coming along with me on this creative journey. I um, have really enjoyed chatting with you about this project and um, it won't be the last. I'm sure I will do many, many more. So thanks again. Go be brave. Cut out that fabric. Do something creative with your sewing. And I hope I've inspired you just a little bit. I've never really done an inside pocket and I know that you could do like a flat felt seam, not flat felt seams, what am I thinking? Okay, so those pockets that have the little like lips that open up.